morning. So, this morning we're at uh, Sheffield. Beautiful, bright, sunny day. And uh, we've got a little daff that's been recovered in. Um, we're up in front spring. So, that's what today's job is. So, what we're going to do, I'll put our shaft back in. And then, uh, once we've done that, we'll get it in over the pit and uh, have a look at this broken spring on it. So, let's have a look. So that's the half shaft back in. Uh, what happens is when a recovery driver recovers a vehicle, they'll take the half shaft out or take the prop shaft off. Uh, basically, to stop any transmission damage while the back wheel's on the floor and it's being transported. Um, just in case oil stops going, don't circulate around gearbox or whatever, and props turn a bit. So that's that back in. So what we'll do now, get it over the pit, have a look at this spring that's broke. Right, so that's the truck in and over the pit. So we'll go down here now. Let's have a look what we're dealing with. Oh, we've certainly got a broken spring. No two ways about it. Definitely got a broken spring on it. So let's have a look. Yeah, so there we go. That bit's supposed to be, that bit there's supposed to be attached to that bit. Obviously it's made all swinging links come up in the chassis. So, yeah, what we'll do with that. Get pit jack on the front here, get it jacked up, undo that shackle pin, undo these U bolts, and then springs off. So, we'll get some tools and get doing. Yeah, so now we've got it jacked up. You can see what's going on. So, get that bolt off, get that bolt off. That'll come out. Under them new bolts, front bolts, that'll all come out. So, yeah. Hmm, interesting job, that. Yeah. Oh, that's something different for a Wednesday. That is one front spring removed. Yeah, good job. That 10 minutes springs off. So, what I've got to do now, try and get his bolts out, not swinging link up back, which you could see on video before we were going against chassis and stuff, sort of threads and after on them. So, that might not be as quick or to be fair, it might be an angry spanner job looking at straight up threads on them and then after them bolts, them bolts have had it. So I'm tempted to just see if we get one done first, if not, we'll just get an angry spanner on it and just cut them off. So that's what we'll do, I think. That's the plan anyway, so we'll see if we can get one done first. The idea would be good. But I'm all burning up on that job, so come on, let's get on. I got that stop. Well, that come off easy enough. I didn't think that thread would have undone on that bolt. If you look, they see all end up bolts damaged. So, it looks that much better to be fair. So, I think we'll get a new nut and bolt for that. And then uh, take it from there, can't we? So, yeah. We're for new spring to come now, which I think is coming to be for about half eight, eight half eight. So it's not bad, is it? Half hour to remove a spring, not do for me. Not a 
got a big job on these are nice and easy, they're not too heavy. So, job's right, jobs are good enough that. So yeah, we'll uh, have a look. I just need to plug into this truck as well because uh, for some reason, when I fetched it in, it's got an ABS fault on it and also it has PTO1 not active. PTO isn't engaged either, so I switched her off in cab. So further plug in on that and see what's going on there as well. Just be on the safe side, make sure everything's right. Uh, find out what ABS fault is, whether it's been picked up on this front wheel, the spring brake, you know. Whether it's cut for a while, it's broke or whatever, and we'll just give it a check over, make sure it's shocker looks alright. Don't look too bad for my stud now. But we'll get up to it and have a proper look at it and make sure that's right. And uh, yeah. All is good in the world. Right, so I don't even notice not, but on the front of this spring, there's like two pins that sit in here. So all I do with them, uh, that's one that I've just had my chisel in, and basically chisel up front bottom, open it out, then in front top. And that's the other one that I've not done yet. Yes, yeah, so you can see the difference there. So if you look how close that one is together compared to that, then when you put your bolts in into the chassis, it will tighten that up onto the pin on the spring. Jobs are good and just lifted new spring up onto the chassis now. Didn't be do that because you always want to see somebody friction and driving with a spring, do they? So, and then uh, I'll get this all one opened up now with chisel and I'll get back down pit and get that new spring on. Right, so what I've done, I've just currently lifted the spring back off because um, them clamps, I couldn't physically get them on. With drag link there, so I just lifted it back down, put them on up floor. But then, if you look here, you've got a little pip all here. Just clean that out. And then your shocker bracket here. You can see, there's a little locating lug there. That sits in top of that, top of the axle. And then your spring sits on top. And there's a locating lug there for your spring sitting as well. So what we'll do, we'll get spring lifted back up, get it on, get it all bolted up, eh? All right, so there we go, spring on. Uh, done my usual trick. Forgot to record it. I usually do. Um, so basically, it's just reverse process what we did before. Then brackets on, you see how they clamp that pin. Four bolts hold that on. Two U-bolts, four nuts, they hold that on. And then uh, what I need to do is get the swinging link on back. Yeah, so we just need to get the swinging link in here now, which is uh, basically the same as that. The two bars that come down, link the two springs together, yeah? Or the spring and the chassis together. So what you can do, you can put a bottle jack in here, jack that spring down, um, or which is probably going to be the best option for it. But uh, obviously, we need bolts for here because it would uh, damage them bolts that come out. So, what I'll do, I'll uh, wait for the new bolts to arrive and they'll get a bottle jack in and do that. Uh, I've got a quick job to do outside another truck whilst waiting for them. So, I will crack on with that job out there for a minute. Oh, afternoon, saw them. Uh, you last saw me in Sheffield. And uh, I just put that spring on that truck and then uh, run it back to the customer. Got back into our depot, just put a set of batteries on a wagon. Um, that was it, really, back to Charlie then. Got back to Charlie for about 20 past five, which were all right. And uh, collected some parts for my job today. So uh, I'm currently down in Plymouth. So, um, just doing a couple of warranty jobs down here. Um, we have the so six or seven little daffs down here uh, that the customer bought off us. And uh, this is warranty work. So, yeah. So, done one this morning. And a bit of a funny job, really. A bit of a red herring with that one. Um, I'll put a picture up in a minute. Uh, probably about now. Yeah, um, on the display in the cab, uh, they have what uh, we call a C mat body on them. That's the make of the body, it's made by C mat. And um, on the display, when you lifted the tailgate up, it came up with a secure card fault. Now, what the customer said was they went to tip yesterday with it and it wanted to jet the load. So there is a way. To make them eject manually so one of our engineers taught the customer through how to do it 
and they managed to get the truck empty. So I've come down to it this morning, opened the tailgate, and straight away it's come up with what I call a secure card fault. So it's a bit of a red herring, is that? Or it was turned out to be a bit of a red herring because when it says secure card fault, um, that's a security card there. That's one of them. That's uh, and it sits into the motherboard. So um, straight away you think secure card fault, dead easy. We'll pop that out, pop a new one in. Jobs are good. Em. Uh -uh. No. Pop the card out, pop the new one on him. This, this is the new one I put in. And uh, still had the fault. So basically, when the tailgate was up, it wouldn't let you eject the load. It told you how to secure a card fault, and it wouldn't let you put the tailgate back down from inside the cab. It would only let you put the tailgate down using the buttons on the outside. Now, uh, when the tailgates come down, they come down to what they call a uh, safety zone, which is usually a meter off the back of the body. Um, and then the driver's physically going to get out, walk to the back of the truck, press the two buttons to shut it. Um, it's like a safety device, just make sure nobody's you know, driving because it was doing. There's nobody stood in between it or whatever else. So it would only come down that way. So I then raise the tailgate back up. And when it comes to the top, it usually says on the display, tailgate high, yeah? If it doesn't say tailgate high, it will not let the ejector push the load back because it doesn't think the tailgate's fully open, yeah? So the tailgate's not fully open, it's not gonna eject its load. So I then went up on the roof and tested the two proxy switches at the top. And they're both lighting up to say this in the tailgate. So for happy days, but then scratch my head and thought, not happy days. Uh, because it's reading them, it knows. And they have a sensor on the RAM, and that knows. So it's like, hmm, this is an issue, this. We got a problem. So basically what I did then was uh, load tested the wiring between the junction box, the Y7 box on the roof, and the two proxy switches. Now, the offside one, load tested perfect. The near side one, didn't load test perfect. So I thought, right, no problem. So, just got a new cable, put it on the sensor, put it into the Y7, everything worked perfect. So I then know it's that, that lead. So, took the lead off. Sorry, took the new lead back off and then I proceeded to pull the old lead out. And as I pulled the old lead out, there was some damage on the cable. And that's why we went load testing right. So yeah, so basically then, popped the new cable in, everything worked perfect. So yeah, that's a good job. So that was that done. Um, then I had another job to look at, um, a sweep blade not working on the back. And when I went to it, it worked perfect. Perfect. Couldn't, couldn't fault it. Never stopped working. Worked perfect. So I then spoke to the driver who had it yesterday and he explained what had happened and it was working perfect and then it just stopped working. So unfortunately the truck's still loaded. So the driver said to me, I need to go and tip it. Are you alright? We're going to tip it. I'll be about half an hour. So I said, Yeah, that's perfect. I'll grab some lunch. Which I've just done, just had my lunch. Albeit, it's half two in the afternoon when I'm having my lunch, but that doesn't matter. And uh, yeah, so that's what we're up to with job. And uh, he's now just backing back up to the side of the van. So what we'll do, we'll go and have a look at it and see if we can get it to fault. And as you'd imagine, it's just started raining, so catch you in a minute. Yeah, I spoke to the driver there, said it tipped perfect, no problem, everything we're good. So, not that tipping was the issue anyway. Um, so basically, what I did to it before he took it, so I was about to get into it, was um, operated it, it all run fine. Now, it was loaded as well. So, but it wasn't that loaded. So what I initial thought was maybe, you know, it's full. 
packed as much as it can pack and that's why the sweet blade won't come back in um but no that wasn't the case it was only half loaded as such so then i checked the button stations stuff like that they're all good all buttons are working fine uh took them apart check contacts all that were good so a bit of an head scratch is this one now it really is but yeah what will do we get out there now and uh just check it again and just make sure it's right I mean, it's working fine it's working fine isn't it so also out down here um i looked at the first truck and i looked at the second truck and the driver come and said he's gonna take it to unload it that's all right so, yeah that's fine i'll get me dinner that's not an issue so nipped at the toilet and got myself coffee on my way to the toilet uh i was talking to one of the mechanics and uh he said he watched my channel, so nice to meet you, Steve. Um, top man, nice to speak to you. Very nice man, uh, very polite, very nice. So, yeah, um, so I said I'd give him a mention on the channel. Did tell my phone with me, or else I could have videoed it, but anyway. So, yeah, Steve works here at Plymouth Council uh, in workshop, and uh, he's come across my videos, so nice to uh, speak to somebody who watches your channel and. Uh, what have you and yeah so anyway um i'll say give a mention so anyway what we'll do we'll go have a look at this now eh? and then uh i think we time to go back to the hotel soon and then uh get some get a shower and get some tea and jobs are good on them so yeah and now i'm waffling like i always do and uh let's crack on and do a bit yeah, so press the uh, button. That all works perfect. So. Press this third. Looking perfect as well, so I'm a bit stumped with that really. Um, I would prefer it to the box on me. And then we've got something to look at, but we haven't, so what I'll do, I'll uh, go through the usual scenarios with it and see if I can find something wrong with it. Yes, yeah, so that's a QR card that I showed you before. Um, you open the side panel on the driver's side, and they've got all the brain here. Um, these are the security cards that sit in here, yeah? So, you can see on the video lights flashing on and stuff like that so when you operate it it comes up on display of what's going on um, just show you quickly as you can see there it's uh, tells what the truck's doing albeit in French ish so but yeah basically um, that's the whole brain for the body you see the blades closing and now the panel's moving back up, so if it was loaded, that would be packing the load at that now. So, um, basically, press F1, and it gives you the option to open the tailgate, eject the load, close the tailgate, and retract the eject up to the front of the body if you wish so wish to do it, yeah? So that one that went about this morning, you press open tailgate, it come up and then use across top here you'll get tailgate high when it gets to it i think it also says tailgate open as well and starts buzzing starts beeping as well now what i'll do i'll not open the tailgate on this body because as you could see when it was cycling the sweep blade there is some mixed recycling it back and it will drop it all over the floor so we didn't really want to do that we should be able, should be able to see the that there is one of the sensors and it's got the same sensor on the other side for the tailgate when it goes up and on the other side the near side it's got the same sensor same position yeah and it was the near side one that other truck that was faulting so um the loom comes off that sensor there at the top and runs into a box along the roof um oh yeah 300 mil cable something not 300 whatever it is 
three thousand mil. No. Yeah, three thousand mil. Three thousand mil length cable, M12 proxy sensor. So, we'll get me a do around the maths there then. Um, so yeah, so can't fault this. So, as the old saying goes, you can't fix it that's not broken, can you? So, I think that. Yeah, so that'll do for today. Um, we'll get some tea and a couple of parts, I think. And then uh, travel back up tomorrow. Nice leisurely place. Well, not leisurely, but a normal pace. Uh, bank holiday weekend, so hopefully the traffic won't be too bad. And uh, jobs are good in at that. So I'll, uh, I'll see you on the next one. And uh, like the videos, please like and subscribe. And uh, if there's any content you want to see, just drop it in comments down below. And uh, I'll see what I can do for you. See you on the next one. Take care.